Up until now, nature's forces have been unleashed one by one to confront Pharaoh. In each of the previous plagues, Moses played a role. His staff or hand called upon the sacred Nile River, the fertile soil, the rainless sky, or the Arabian desert sands to inflict punishment. These signs and wonders across Egypt demonstrated that the God of Moses wasn't just a local deity, but Lord over all, earth, air, water, animals, humans, plants. However, for the final devastating judgment, the elements wouldn't be used. At midnight, Jehovah declares, he will intervene directly. All the firstborn in Egypt, from Pharaoh himself to the lowliest servant, and even the firstborn animals, will perish. This will be a judgment against all the gods or powerful figures of Egypt, Exodus 13:12. for I am Jehovah. Before the devastating blow that would strike down the firstborn of both the high and the low in Egypt, certain crucial preparations were necessary. This was during the Hebrew month of Nisan, also known as Abib, the month of green ears. On the 14th day of Nisan, the Israelites were told the final terrible judgment would occur. However, 10 days earlier, on a date that would mark the beginning of their sacred year, each household head was instructed to select a perfect male lamb or kid, one year old. They were to keep it until the 14th day, then slaughter it just before sunset, Exodus 12, 1, 6. A portion of the lamb's blood was to be applied with hyssop to the doorposts of their homes. That very night, they were to eat the lamb roasted whole, without breaking a single bone. This meal, accompanied by unleavened bread and bitter herbs, was to be eaten in haste, as if preparing for a quick departure. They were to be dressed for travel, with their loins girt, shoes on their feet, and staffs in hand. No part of the lamb's flesh could be left until morning. Any leftovers were to be burned in fire. The Israelites were told that at midnight, while they partook in this special meal, the Lord would pass through Egypt, striking down all the firstborn. But upon seeing the blood markings on their houses, he would pass over them, sparing them from this destructive plague. Exodus 12, 7-12. The Passover was established as a lasting memorial feast, not just for that night, but for all generations to come. For seven days, Israelites wouldn't eat or keep any leavened bread in their homes, Exodus 12, 14 and 15. Upon receiving God's instructions through Moses, the Israelite elders, sharing his strong faith in the coming events, Hebrews 11:28, bowed in worship Exodus 12, 27 to 28. On the 10th day of Nisan, the month of redemption, each household chose a lamb or young goat, kept it until the 14th day, then slaughtered it, Exodus 12, 3, 6. They sprinkled the blood on their doorways, and at midnight, while consuming the animal with specific rituals, the final and most devastating plague struck, Exodus 12, 6, 11. The Lord smote all the firstborn in Egypt, from prisoners to Pharaoh himself, along with the firstborn of their livestock, Exodus 12:29. In the terror of that night, Pharaoh, his servants, and all Egyptians awoke to a land filled with wailing. No house was spared the loss of a firstborn child, Exodus 12:30. Broken and terrified, the once stubborn king finally yielded to the power of God, Jehovah. He begged Moses and Aaron to leave as quickly as possible, Exodus 12, 31. Not only Pharaoh, but all his people joined the plea, even showering the Israelites with gifts of silver, gold jewelry, clothing and ornaments, Exodus 12, 35 to 36. Adorned with these Egyptian gifts, symbolizing their day of liberation, the vast Israelite multitude, 600,000 men of fighting age, along with women, children, and a large group of Egyptians from the lower classes, departed from Ramesses. Under the cover of darkness and cool night air, they began their journey, Exodus 12, 37, 38. Israel's escape from Egypt had begun. The easiest path to Canaan lay north along the coast, 
but God knew a confrontation with the fierce Philistines would be devastating. Instead of a quick journey, the Israelites traveled south from Ramesses. Their first camp was at Sukkoth, Exodus 12:37, a lush oasis on the edge of Egypt. At their next stop, Etham, God visibly took the lead, a pillar of cloud by day, fire by night. This sign was vital as their unexpected route trapped them near the Red Sea between Migdol and Baal-Zephon. Suddenly, Pharaoh's army was upon them. The Israelites panicked, regretting their freedom from Egypt. But Moses remained steadfast, telling them to wait for God's deliverance. It came swiftly. The guiding pillar moved behind them, shielding the Israelites in light, but casting the Egyptians into darkness. Moses stretched his rod over the Red Sea, and a powerful east wind split the waters, creating a path with towering water walls. Throughout the night, Israel crossed safely. Meanwhile, determined to recapture their slaves, the Egyptians rushed blindly into the Dark Sea Passage. At dawn, God disrupted their advance, their chariot wheels sinking into the exposed seafloor. They tried to flee, but it was too late. Moses again raised his hand. The sea walls crashed down, burying the entire Egyptian army. Israel erupted in celebration. Moses sang praise to the God who had gloriously triumphed, Miriam and the women joining in with music and dance, Exodus 15, 1-19, and Psalm 77, 16-19. Centuries after God's promise to Abraham, it came to pass. The descendants, once a small group, had become a mighty nation. They endured hardship as foreigners in Egypt, suffering cruel treatment and oppression. But their oppressors faced judgment, and the Israelites emerged greatly enriched. The gold, silver, and fine clothes taken from their former enslavers were fitting symbols of their newfound freedom. Transformed from slaves to a sovereign people, they left behind the tyranny of Egypt and its painful memories. As Paul wrote, 1 Corinthians 10:2, they were united with Moses through their experiences in the cloud and the sea. Now, their eyes were fixed on the promised land and a future filled with hope. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this journey, and it's been great exploring its meaning with you. If you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more engaging content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay blessed and keep learning.